Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about everything Missoula and beyond. Uh, I got some news. I got some city council. They're talking about the Russell Street project. I'll get more on that a little bit later, but let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 25 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 51. Your low is going to be 34. You have a 20 to 30% uh, chance of rain going into Thursday, where rain chances are going to increase by 50% to about 90 to about 30 quickly. So there's going to be uh, scattered showers all throughout this week. Um, you have highs into 35, but things are going to dip a little bit cooler, so you have a chance of snow in the mountains. Um, Friday, it's going to rain probably down here in the valley, but you can expect some snowfall happening this weekend as well. And I'll keep you guys updated this Friday just to kind of see where we're going to be at at that point and maybe reflect on some of the weather that we've been having the, these uh, next couple of days. But of course, yesterday was a really fun day. Um, I was able to get out with a couple of uh, job shadows from the Hellgate High School kids, and we were able to get some cool little drone shots from our new uh, drone that we have here at MCAT. So I'll show you some of that footage and more later on the show. But let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. So in the first thing, first things first, Russell Street Bridge is slated for project. So not only are they going to replace the two-lane bridge um, with a better bridge, but they're going to add three more lanes to it, which will total five lanes. So this is going to be a five-lane bridge over uh, Russell that will connect uh, Broadway to the uh, south side of the Broadway, uh, of that area. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the new Russell Street Project will include five lanes toward Third Street. The whole idea is that the bridge is kind of like a prelude to most of the projects because what they're going to try to do for Russell Street in general is make it double wide so you have uh, five lanes with the middle lane being the um, turning lane as well. So by the end of the whole thing's finished in December of 2019, so it's a whole other year, there will be a, a new five-lane bridge instead of the current two-lane bridge crossing along the riverbank under both um, south and north ends of the bridge, a new pedestrian bike tunnel under Russell at the Milwaukee trail crossing, uh, a new traffic signal at the intersection of Wyoming and Russell, and a new five-lane road from the bridge to South uh, First Street that will include a, th a tree-lined medium sidewalk and bike lanes. Uh, for more information, you can go to the Missoulian.com. In state news, tuberculosis has been found in uh, one of the students at Flathead High School. About 200 Flathead High School students and staff members were notified Tuesday morning that they may have been exposed to a student who has TB. Uh, a handful of non-student people who have may have contact with the ill student also were contacted, uh, said Hillary Hansen, the Flathead uh, City County Health Department officer. She added that they're working closely with the Montana Department of uh, Health and Human Services and the Kalispell Regional Medical Center to manage the care of the students. She noted that this can be spread by coming in contact with someone's clothing, drinking, uh, glass, drinks, um, glasses, um, eating utensils, and a handshake. Ooh. Symptoms include a cough lasting longer than three weeks, unexplained weight loss, night sweats, chills, fevers, coughing, up blood. If not treated, tuberculosis can be fatal. Um, in recent years, doctors have seen an increase in drug-resistant strains of tuberculosis uh, bacterium. Antibiotics were first used to fight TB more than t 60 years ago, and since then, some of the um, germs have developed the ability to survive. Uh, drug-resistant strains also are created if an antibiotic fails to kill the bacteria, which is why the treatment lasts for six to nine months. So a person with tuberculosis becomes non-contagious within a few days, two weeks of effective treatment and can return to normal activities without posing a risk to others while completing treatment, Hansen says. So, um, of course, here's the, um, some stories to freak out a couple uh people who are afraid the sky is falling, a Chinese satellite is about to fall to Earth. But where it lands is anybody's guess. In the story of NPR, current uh, predictions say that the 19,000-pound lab should re-enter the Earth's atmosphere sometime in the last few days of March or the first few days of April. The lab is called Chegong-1, which means Heavenly Palace. China launched it into space in 2011. Uh, the outpost was briefly visited twice by uh, Chinese uh, taconauts, um, including Wang Ye Ping, who uh, beamed down a science lecture to school children. Although uh, Tengong um, 1 has been called a Chinese space station, it actually is just a precursor to Chinese planned space station. Um, what they want to see is what they can make into space before they begin to create the mega station of sorts. The station is a way to have something in space, but of, as of late was less important to the future of the Chinese space program. But of course, don't worry, the satellite will burn up on reentry, and chances of uh, people getting hit by this device 
price are very slim. But it's still falling, so that's some of the news items that are happening in and around the world today. Um, I have a little tease um, of Look Before You Speak. It's a program that I produced with uh, former uh, Missoula Art Museum curator, Steve Glukert. So here is a Look Before You Speak, which will be airing in April next month. Yeah, sometimes I have some creation blocks whenever whenever I have trouble with that. I just think, what, well, what's my least favorite thing to draw? So then I just draw Your my... Your least favorite? Yeah, my least favorite thing to draw. So then I just start drawing that first for a warm up. You do challenge yourself, don't you? Yeah. That's great. I'm, choose I'm not going to embarrass tool. myself, but I'm going to tell you one story. Is that when I was in your age in school, uh, the computer class was a class where we had to feed in punch cards into a machine about the size of this room <laughs> <laughs> to make the machine keep records of everybody's grades. Yeah. That's that was the that was the computer, <laughs> yeah. and the, and there was a huge argument over um, calculators whether to allow them into the classroom or not, and a lot of people accused students of that at that time who were using calculators, just calculators, could add and subtract and do division, that they were cheaters. Yeah. They would say that. And so it's kind of a parallel to what you're going through right now with graphics. Yeah, with graphic design. Because I, I would like to lean more on, like even more onto this than how I've usually been leaning onto it. But, you know, you're I would. Leaning onto it, what do you mean? Like, um, just like using this more often than just going, coming to MCAT and using it, mm -hmm. using it here other, th other than just using it here. I would like to, I would like to learn more about how to, um, use it even better than how I know how to use it right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, here's a couple uh, MCAT announcements as well. If you are a producer or, or want to make your own television program, inquire by calling us at 5426228, otherwise known as 542MCAT. You can email us MCAT at MCAT.org. If you have any questions about producing or creating your own show here on MCAT, um, once again, you can always go to our wonderful website, which is MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resources for everything MCAT, from our programs that we film and the programs that we produce. And also, we uh, we go out and we shoot a lot of events here in the city of Missoula. Last night, I shot an event called Tell Us Something, Right Place, Right Time, which will be airing on MCAT pretty soon. So you can check that out, and you can find out more programs by going on to Channel 189 or 190. 190 is our channel for if you are interested in finding anything from the city and government civic channels, but of course Channel 189 is all our public lectures, university lectures, MCPS concerts, all sorts of uh, wonderful programs that you guys can access at any time. But um, many of the things that you can also access as well is our summer camp, our spring, uh, there's a lot of camps happening, but right now we're talking about a spring flicks deal. So um, we cut the price from $150 and we knocked it down to about $110 for a whole week, seven hours a day from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for kids. Uh, we have some pre-care available for kids at 8.30 a.m. Yes, I am pitching you guys. If you have a kid between the ages of 9 and 14 and you want Basically, you don't really have any um, spring break plans, and you have the whole week off, and you don't want your kid kind of sitting around playing video games, and you want your kid to actually go out and do something. MCAT's uh, Spring Flicks is the place to be. We create movies, we create shorts, we create all sorts of wonderful things, and we try to curve it to their creativity, and also have the kids work on projects together. So if they are not creative themselves, they can also uh, develop a good team building work ethic skill through our Spring Flicks program. So come join us then. And it's going to be great. We, we just got a drone, and maybe we'll uh, play with uh, some nice aerial shots of this downtown Missoula area. So uh, come inquire within at MCAT.org. Of course, um, I can talk about the drone all I want, but I'd rather just kind of show you guys. So we have some really cool footage of the drone. So without further ado, here are some clips of the drone. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about some city council of some things happening uh, from this past Monday's, the 19th of March's city council meeting.
Those birds might attack our uh, new drone, so you gotta be careful. Nah, they wouldn't do that, would they? Yeah, they would. Yeah, they would. <laughs> Those birds can suck it. <laughs> All right, now hit the landing button. I'll get a little. We'll get a, we'll get a better spot next time, so we can fly it easier. All right, welcome back, guys. Here's some city council. Uh, after city council, I'll have some behind the scenes of MCAT's involvement with the parade, as you can see from our, uh, our uh, subject, Austin, who is flying the drone at the very end of that video that uh, he was all dressed up to be St. Patty during the St. Patrick's Day parade. So we basically put him a cloak and we put him on a hoverboard and he fl drove around, handed out candy to some children. All right, so let's talk about some city council, and this is all accessible by going to ci.missoula.mt.us. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about some um, um, city council. Uh, Kim Dudick uh, talks about um, Women's Month and specifically uh, women in office. So here's Kim Dudick. Montana has always been a leader in women's equality. We were the first state to send a woman to the U.S. Congress in 1916 when Jeanette Rankin was elected. Montana also provided women with the right to vote um, six years before women gained this right nationally. So we've always been trail um, leaders in this area. Although Native American women did not gain this right until 1924, so we do have some equality issues. T women, though, play a critical role in today's um, in today's communities, we are great leaders. We provide strong advocacy in many areas. And while the 20th century is a pivotal time for growth for women entering politics, women remain underrepresented. Today, we, I ask you to join me in recognizing so to celebrate Women in Public Office Day. This is part of a national movement that 31 communities and 22 states have recognized today as celebrating Women in Public Office Day. It is a day to recognize the contribution women have made in public office and I would ask that you consider observing March 19th every year as a day to celebrate women in public office and to take activities and recognize the women, their contributions. So with that, I uh, thank you for your service, all of you men and women. And I think it's especially important that we advocate for children, women, girls, boys, all having equal representation and a fair way of being involved in their communities. Um, thank you. All right. So just so you guys know that the city council have eight uh, members that are women and four members that are men. Uh, just a nice little uh, trivia note for you guys in the city of Missoula. So Heidi West talks about preventative measures uh, that help quality of life. So uh, with this recent um, approval of the uh, smoking ban on that extends to vaping indoors in public places, um, Heidi West thinks that there are many other things that uh, the city of Missoula should look into for preventative uh, to improve the quality of life in Missoula. Over the past few weeks, I've spent a lot of time thinking about living in a world where we would actually legislate more broadly on a precautionary principle and how that would affect where we live. Um, and in the context of air quality, uh, I think there's a lot of different applications and I wish it was actually maybe applied less discriminately um, because it could have a great effect on for example, the types of paint we use or the flame retardants. And then in the context of public health costs that are associated um, and that we're trying to prevent, we should probably also be talking about things like soft drinks and sugar and access to healthy food and gun policy and how it affects our country. Um, and then more broadly, how um, differently we would legislate in the context of climate change and, for example, building codes and transportation choices um, and also how we would treat things like affordable housing policy. And so I, I, I guess I came to realize that I actually, for one thing, I'm voting in support of the smoking ordinance, but how I wished we made as a nation and locally and as a state, how we actually did legislate more often on the precautionary principle um, and the outlook into the future. So, All right, so that was uh, Heidi West uh, talk, just reflecting on the smoking ban ordinance and how um, 
maybe there could be uh, more being done. So, of course, most of the comments was about the uh, updating smoking ban would make vaping indoors following the same guidelines as smoking. Uh, of course, six months from now, uh, vaping indoors will be policed within the city of Missoula. So if you are smoking or if you're vaping inside bars or public places, you'll be ticketed just as much as if you were smoking indoors. Um, the whole idea is... Uh, um, usually it takes about a month to get implemented, but they amended it, so it takes a little bit longer to adjust for some places because uh, some vape shops that specifically sell vaping um, equipment to people and kind of show them how to use it, they asked to be exempt, but I didn't get approved. So that's kind of like what they were talking about as well, and it was approved by the city ordinance to update it to basically just kind of put the same guidelines as vaping as smoking. Many of the people were saying, like, vaping is not smoking, but the same idea is that vaping uh, has uh, – they say that it, it goes into the air regardless. So city, county, health department uh, viewed it as a poor quality – poor air quality uh, contributor, which added to this as well. So – and also it, it mostly followed the guidelines of the state – ruling because the state kind of updated it from Missoula. So the whole background behind it is that Missoula created it, a smoking ordinance, and then the state's like, okay, that's a good idea. Let's do it. Okay, what about this thing? Okay, we'll update this to our own thing. And then Missoula's like, oh, you updated it? Okay, let us update our ordinance to follow the guidelines of the state law in place for smoking indoors. Okay, so anyways, um, John Engen, he makes a proclamation for kid-led causes on gun violence prevention. So here is John Engen reading a March for Our Lives. Whereas Americans are 25 times more likely to be killed with guns than people in other developed countries, and whereas an estimated more than 150,000 students in the United States have been on a campus where gun violence has occurred, and whereas students across Missoula County have been organizing fellow Missoulians to participate in the national movement to call for gun violence prevention, and whereas support for the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens goes hand-in-hand hand with keeping guns away from dangerous people, and whereas we renew our commitment to join with the students in Missoula to reduce gun violence and pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and encourage responsible gun ownership to help keep our children safe, now, therefore, I, John Ingen, Mayor of the City of Missoula in the state of Montana, hereby recognize the 24th day of March as March for Our Lives, Students Against Gun Violence Day. And thank you students for being here and other advocates for your uh, relentless work on this pressing issue in our community and nation. We are all grateful for lots of reasons. All right. So um, a lot of the uh March for Our Lives is a program that really kind of got cultivated through a lot of students who are very concerned about their own public safety as well. A lot of times they fear as though that their voices aren't being heard because they're not of voting age, but a lot of their uh, um, background is saying it's like, we may not be voting age now, but we will be. Um, so that that's the idea that they're trying to um, kind of be on part of to kind of help move, uh, you know, gun regulation um, talks forward as well. So um, Arts Missoula, uh, segue, Arts Missoula provides services in the community, including maintaining a community events calendar, administering the Missoula Public Art Committee, the Sister City Period Program, and the Montana Book Festival, and of course, Spark. Um, this um, enhancement w would f uh, provide funding for a Director of Global and Cultural Affairs, developing programs in cultural sensitivity training for schools, city and county employees and other public and pr or private groups expanding sister city activities and initiatives and implementing community outreach programs specific to global issues. John Engen reflects on the need for this and uh, the urgency of this, of this um, upgrade. There is some urgency around this request, otherwise we wouldn't bring this to you outside of the normal budget process, and that has to do <clears throat> with um, recruitment of candidates, and in particular, um, the Cultural Council Arts Missoula had an opportunity to pursue um, uh, a particular candidate who is uh, uniquely fitted to this position, and we wanted to make sure that that opportunity wasn't lost. Um, you should know that uh, the funds for um, 
this uh, pro rata share of the year uh, will come from our cash balance. It will not raise taxes, nor will it affect our plan to compensate for uh, issues around the accounting error, of which you are all familiar. Um, and uh, we plan, uh, as a function of uh, the 2019 budget, to um, shore this up and shore up the good work that the Cultural Council is doing and fill what we believe is a significant gap in the community, given some changes at the University of Montana. And, of course, if you guys don't know the background between the uh, budget issue they had this year, they had an um, a important meeting that they served early in January to talk about the budget constraints. So the whole idea is that they were basically grabbing money from the wrong pot and so they had to readjust everything so a lot of times the money that they think they have they don't have anymore so they're trying to work with the system to make it basically make it work and this um, process the whole uh, director of global and cultural affairs they're asking for a budget expenditures by thirty four thousand four hundred twenty four dollars increase for the Missoula Culture Council which is Arts Missoula Jordan Hess um, has the last quote of this meeting uh, the City Council meeting and uh, he supports this and this is why um, in our time with um, in our polarizing divisive reactionary time I think it's really important that we um, spend a lot of effort on cultural competency um, I have the pleasure of working um, at my day job at the University of Montana with um, a lot of international students very regularly and those interactions um, enrich my life and enrich uh, the lives of everyone around um, around them. Um, so I'm, I think it's a great uh, program and I'm, I'm happy to support it and I, I thank you for bringing it forward. Ms. Jones? All right, so uh, that was Jordan Hess, and that will wrap up the meeting. Of course, the City of Council uh, uh, voted in favor to increase the total city budget expenditures by the $34,000 uh, to provide additional funding to Arts Missoula. The city also approved a Missoula Police Department to sell, give back, or demolish items that have no need in the police evidence and storage. The police are going to be moving a lot of evidence and storage to the new facility just off of Wyoming Street. It's directly across the street from... Um, God, uh, it's Catlin Street, and it's directly across from uh, West Side Lanes and the Missoula Food Bank. So that's where the new storage is going to be. Um, and the whole idea is, of course, um, they want to know if they can auction out some of the items that they don't use. So, of course, look out for any upcoming police auctions for that special confiscated item that you guys have been looking for. Of course, I saw this in the police auction, and I automatically thought of you. So go to ci.mt.edu. US for more information. If you uh, automatically type in co.missoula.mt.us, you'll go to the county website. This is the city website, ci.missoula.mt.us. It is wonderful. You can also Google City of Missoula and it'll bring you to this wonderful page, which kind of shows you the wonderful life that is Missoula. And also, you can go to your government. You can, how do I, all sorts of things. You can actually apply for a job online. You can do a license, permit. You can apply for a board commission. So if you want to get involved with the city of Missoula, you're more than welcome to. All you got to do is go to ci.missoula.mt.us. All those things are wonderful and more. But, of course, uh, one of the things that uh, people need to do before they do like a parade is they need to get a license to the city of Missoula, which uh, for the St. Patrick's Day parade they've been doing for such a long time, it's pretty much become easy enough to do St. Patrick's Day. So here are some of the behind the scenes of uh, St. Patrick's Day par parade provided by our very own Graham Martin, um, prospective employee and editor of all sorts of fun behind the scenes stuff. So um, I'll show you that. And when I come back, I'll tell you about some events that are happening here in Missoula. So stay with me. Oh, here we go again. Back again with the vlogs, I guess. Vlogs! I don't want to sound, I don't know, sound like that. This guy is just cute. Yeah. Once again. Oh! Hoity doity! The frog here is saying that we should take a bomb and blow it up. From St. Patty. That state doesn't. Quiet! Yeah? St. Patty's drove all the snakes away. Really? Yeah. Oh. There weren't, there's no scientific That's proof that they were there. You're welcome. I'm uneducated. <laughs> St. Patty's? Why didn't Rowan join us? Because Rowan is no, <laughs> not uh, cool. <laughs> see, St. Patrick retroactively got rid of the snakes. <laughs> if you mess with me, eat them up. <laughs> if I give
give up. He's just gonna yell out Austin's name, and then for me. So we're just waiting for uh, Joel to get here with his phone because he has Irish music already prepared on yeah. it as well. So you thought it's over? Oh, we're doing some more behind the scenes. I'll sing Danny Boy for a little bit. Dan oh Danny. <laughs> oh Danny Boy. Danny oh, Cal oh Danny yeah. Boy. Okay, now I'm gonna do like a like a like a beat. Danny Boy. Oh. Danny Boy, when the Irish eyes smile. This guy once was a settler, his name was Jack. He was quite the man, except he's not all that. <laughs> oh! Good! You're good! You're good! You're good! You're good! You're good! A little bit to the left! You're good! A little bit to the left! Wait, no, no, yeah! No! Stop! 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 Candy! I drank the entire town. Believe I saved the lives from a bunch of snakes. But they don't... They, they can't prove they're alive. Why did I do You should do what Scott does and, uh, and uh, say a bunch of half-finished idioms into the microphone. Oh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't get your wife. Oh, I did it! <laughs> well, she wanted, she was like, this is really fun. And then afterwards, she was like, oh, I don't, I, like, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some events. So Austin, your opinion on the parade? A lady got mad at me and she thought I said no to the child and I didn't. I didn't even say anything to the child, I didn't even see him. And she was like, I say, uh, she was like, oh how dare you say, I'm like, oh, how dare you? Like, I didn't even hear the child. Okay, now we're back for realsies. Okay, so that was the, uh, um, St. Patrick's Day Parade 2018. Uh, that was some of the behind the scenes of the parade as well. Um, of course, you didn't actually see uh, much of the actual parade uh, because most of the time um, our camera guy who was filmed behind the scenes was passing out candy. So, all right, let's kick things off with some events that are happening. So if you guys are planning on doing some um, gymnastics for, with your kids and you want your kids to do some tumbling in a safe, uh, child-proof um, gymnasium, uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Roos Acker Sports Center, and Mismo Gymnastics are the place to be from 9 a.m. to about 12. It's great. Um, Art of Associates of Missoula monthly meeting. There's a lot of ofs in that one. Uh, Missoula Art Museum is hosting a Larry Burton glass etching artist. We'll speak about transforming plain grass into murals, landscapes, and geometric patterns. So starting at 10 a.m. this morning. Um, NAMI, Managing Another Life, um, a free weekly life skills group for adults living with mental illness. No, no registration is required. They do this. They have a lot of programs in place. They have NAMI crafts as well, but this is a good way to uh, help manage your life. If you're uh, afflicted with a mental illness or you know or you live with someone who's afflicted with a mental illness slash friend family that kind of deal anybody who's in, even interested in doing it nami missoula provides that um pretty much most daily for anybody 
Um, 2018 federal tax update, understanding the changes. A Missoula Area Chamber of Commerce is hosting a, uh, basically, uh, a government enrichment IRS, IRS, uh, IRS uh, yep, kind of thing, starting at 11.30 a.m. this morning. The federal government enacted a major overhaul to the federal tax system, the largest in over 30 years uh, since Reagan. Uh, during this event, uh, Whipfly Associates will share tax updates and insights um, regulated to individuals estate, gift, and GST, and business to help you understand how to, uh, how the recent changes could impact you and your business. Um, of course, presented by Whip, Fi, Flea, CPAs, and consultants. So check that out. You can just learn a little bit more about this tax season because one of the biggest things that happened was a tax reform uh, by our current President Trump. Uh, Scrabble and Bridge is happening at 1230-ish, so once you get done with your taxes, you can go over and play some cards at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 1230. Grandparents Raising Grandchildren Support Group. So if you're a grandparent and you are babysitting a lot of times and Missoula Agent Service is having a raising grandchildren support group from 1 to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, it's a support group is a collaboration between the MSU Extension Office and Missoula Agent Services. It meets every third Wednesday of the month, so it's going to meet today. It's also going to meet the 18th of April and May 16th from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, it's at uh, 337 Stevens Avenue. There's no cost to participate. Please come join the group for education and access to research based on support and research that will enable parenting grandparents to le lead uh, – healthier, happier lives. Uh, middle School Writers Group is happening after school today at the Missoula Public Library starting at 3.30 p.m. If you're a kid, uh, if you have a kid that's having some writing troubles or uh, who is a writer who wants to express himself, Missoula Public Library is the place to be, and they also have some chocolate there for some of the kids. So, um, Youth Soccer Leagues. If you want your kid to be out there, um, of course, the weather is getting a little bit nicer, so it's going to be harder to kind of stay indoors. But, of course, rain is... Uh, in the forecast, youth soccer leagues at the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena is at 5 p.m. Of course, the adult one is on Thursdays at 6 p.m. I'll get to that a little bit later. So, um, new to Medicare, Medicare workshop. So, at the University of Montana, March 19th and 21st, which is today, and it was also on Monday. So, if you missed the one on Monday, tonight you have a chance to do it from 6 to 8 p.m. If you're approaching the age of 65 or eligible for Medicare due to a disability, learn how you can make the most of your Medicare options. In this interactive two part class, you You'll learn about important enrollment dates, saving money on your prescription drugs, and much more. The second session each month provides a hands-on computer workshop so you can learn about your personal Medicare claims, plans, and coverage. The cost is $35 or two for $60, and you can register new to Medicare.eventbrite.com. Um, helping your child gain self-confidence. Families for Children Museum hosts a bunch of educational classes to improve your uh, families and your child's uh, quality of life in terms of um, personality. So um, from 6.15 to about 8.15 p.m. at Paxson Elementary School, which is on 101 Evans Avenue, children who have healthier self-esteem and who feel accepted and appreciated attend to approach life with optimism and incompetent, uh, confidence. Uh, this workshop will answer the questions, what is self-esteem, what do children, how do children get it, and how do parents uh, give it? Parents will leave the, with strategies to engage with their children in a manner that fosters self-esteem and responsibility. The class is free and open to all, and free child care is available for parents who want to drop their kids off while they learn about their child. Okay, so that's uh, some of the events that are happening for your Wednesday. If you're interested in karaoke, tonight Badlander is hosting karaoke. Um, karaoke is going to be at the Dark Horse. And, of course, VFW is having a dance party. Woo! And also, rocking. Um, uh, you got Amongst Bars having um, the wind, the Widow's Sun Tour. Um, it's playing that night. It's hip-hop DJ music. Woo! And also, historic. Oh, wait, I don't know if you know why this is on there, but the Historic Preservation Awards uh, must have got mixed up their AM and PM for today. But it's the City of Missoula Historic Preserva Preservation Office. They're calling for nominations, and I think you can nominate people online for the Historic Preservation Awards. So people who you think um, deserve it and who have preserved buildings or maybe people who have bought a business that used to be part of an old building who helped preserve it are always looking for nominations and you can nominate them at ci.missoula.mt.us. So that's about that. I have, let's see, what else do I have to show you guys? I have a bunch of 
cool little clips and whatnot. I showed you about three of them. I do have, let's see, hmm. I'm just trying to find the right thing that I can show you guys. Uh, this is an art clip which is going to end on March 30th. So by the time um, this week's over and Spring Flicks is coming into full swing next week, I won't be doing Wake Up Missoula next week during spring break because I'll be working other things. So um, here is an art clip which will end by the end of March. Clay Studio of Missoula is a wonderful place. Um, they always have classes there, so if you're interested in clay making uh, and you're from Missoula, that's the place to be. Um, and it's just by Lowell School, so you can't miss it. Um, Lowell School also has a bunch of after-school programs for a lot of kids called Clay Mania. Um, I know that because I do a Lowell School after-school program with my film club. Um, yeah, it's a great place. Learn, create. Let's talk about <laughs> just like literally just like my face just like let's move on all right so YMCA family fun time at the Y starting at 9 a.m. Uh, most days they start at 9 a.m. to go to about 12 Fridays they start after school from 3 30 to 5 30 it's a great time just to have some family fun time YMCA is kind of like your source for all sports related fun activities the Ender Pool. They just have a lot of cool stuff there for sure. And I haven't been there in a while. And last time I was there, it was like, whoa, when do they get a rock wall? And all that fun stuff. So you can check that out starting Thursday morning at 9 a.m. But also, Tiny Tales is at the Missoula Public Library at 10.30 a.m. Um, yeah, and kids get to basically learn to uh, read and um, engage in books and all sorts of wonderful things at the Missoula Public Library. Arts Missoula Annual Arts and Culture Awards. Um, Arts and Culture Awards would be presented by a luncheon March 22nd, tomorrow, at 11.30 a.m. at the Doubletree Hotel. Arts Missoula Annual Art and Culture. They say this like five times. It honors individuals and organizations whose outstanding work in the arts and humanities have made a significant contribution to the community quality of life. The 2018 awards will be presented at the Missoula Art and Culture Awards Luncheon Thursday, March 22nd at the Double Tree from 1130 to 1 p.m. Identity theft protection is important, and you guys can check that out. The Missoula Area, Area Chamber of Commerce is doing all sorts of wonderful things. It's tax. They're doing some tax um, classes today, but tomorrow they're doing identity theft protection. This class will be an extension look at the world of identity theft, the number one complaint to the FTC in the past 18 years. They will be cover a variety of topics that will help you identify what you should and shouldn't do to protect your personal and business information. And presented by Jackie Johnson, Legal Shield slash ID Shield. Um, and you can check that out at the Missoula Chamber of Commerce um, starting at 12 noon tomorrow. Make it and take it crafts at the Big Sky Branch. If you are a Big Sky High School student, great. You can just uh, hang out after school and do some um, crafts, and you get to take it home with you. But if you're not, Missoula Public Library hosts this event for anybody who wants to go to Big Sky High School and just make some crafts and stuff so that they meet the, the library. Um, and you can't miss it because it's like right near the entrance. Um, it starts at uh, 7.30 p.m., but of course, if you're interested, you can call them at 728-2400. Uh, 
I remember that because um, that's the the universal number for the uh, MCPS school system, which is seven two eight twenty four hundred. And of course, the extension might be different. You might have to ask for an extent the extension for the Big Sky High School. Anyways, uh, cicada drums at the Missoula Insectarium. Male cicadas make a lot of noise, but are aren't they just making noise to annoy everybody in the area? Their loud buzzing sounds are produced if they are alarmed, warning warming up. Attracting mates, establishing territory, courting, and joining in a chorus. Um, this week, they'll be learn. You guys will be learning how they make these sounds and crafting a cicada drum. And this is happening from 3 to 5 p.m. at the Missoula Secretarium. You could go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information. Adult Soccer League. I told you I was going to talk about more about soccer. Indoor Sports Arena. Missoula Indoor Sports Arena hosts an Adult Soccer League Thursdays at 6 p.m. Uh, you can register at 531-3331. Um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena uh, leagues are here, and they're offering men's and women's recreational and competitive leagues. So if you just want to run around and kick some balls, that's the place to be. But if you want to get a little more competitive, it is a great way because the field's a little bit smaller and you don't have to run that far. Um, indoor sports arena, it's really nice. It's not too big, so you can get uh, a, a good workout out of there without straining yourself like a marathon runner like they do in the outdoor soccer field regulation sizes. So you can enjoy that. Um, and more as you guys plan on going out on and about Thursday night. Some of the things that you guys can do is uh, – um, let me just double check. MissoulaEvents.net is your place to go to the website. And I'm just going to scroll on down to some of your Thursday night events. You got some live jazz at Plonk. You got some Monks Bars doing the Dust Up Tour. Man, more tours at the Monks Bar. Good for them. And the Oh Hellos at the Top Hat Lounge is going to be some folk music. Uh, Matt Stevers, Stiver's band is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. And karaoke. Yes, you get some more karaoke for your Thursday night at the Dark Horse. So Dark Horse is, seems to like be the place to be. Dark Horse seems like the place to be for your karaoke tonight and tomorrow night. So you can check that all out and more by going to MissoulaEvents.net. I'm not going to show you it. So thank you guys for joining me. I, uh, yeah, this, there's a lot going on. And you guys can check it out. There's a lot of classes, tax classes, uh, Medicare classes, Missoula Agent Services, classes for grandparents who are helping raise uh, their grandchildren. All sorts of these more by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. If you're interested in finding out more about the city, all the committee meetings are happening today. Um, you can watch them live on our channel, 190. You can also go back and refer to them um, and look at the topics by going to ci.missoula.mt.us. But if you're interested in more, uh, you can go to you can Google me, Wake Up Missoula. All you got to do is type in Wake Up Missoula, and you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and more. But then again, if you want to learn how to do your own show, uh, tonight is orientation, and you can get, be a part of MCAT. You just have to sign a user agreement, and you're good to go. We give free uh, camera checkouts. We have light equipment. We have audio equipment. We have all sorts of equipment to help you guys get your program into place, whether it's a presentation or you just want to make a silly movie. It's great. So you guys can check that out. And tonight is orientation at 530. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and I hope you guys have a wonderful couple days. I'll be back Friday to uh, wrap up the month of March. So stay, uh, stay with me, and I'll see you guys Friday for the Flagship Friday video of the week. Mm -hmm.